Our sermon text for this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. The Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and set on it as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this side sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. The word of God for the people of God. May the God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's word. Our sermon title for this morning is, Who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? Pray for my strength this morning that I reveal and witness to you what the Holy Spirit has told me to do. God, please, create in me a clean heart. Renew the Spirit, God. Come, Holy Spirit, speak. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, my Lord, my rock, my redeemer. And God, please, let this message fall on fertile ground, on fertile ears, so that it can be applied within our lives, from the pulpit, to the pews, to those watching virtually. It is in your name I offer this prayer. Amen. Who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? One of my favorite theologians is Frederick Beekner who wrote a memoir called Telling Secrets. Although it was written in 1991, I didn't read it until 2008 while I was in seminary. It's a tiny book with a powerful message that I keep near my desk in my office to read over and over and over again. Beekner said that he called the book Telling Secrets because he had come to believe that by and large the human family all have, has the same secrets which are both very telling and very important to tell that it is important to tell at least 
from time to time the secret of who we truly and fully are. Even if we tell it to ourselves. Because otherwise we run the risk of losing track of who we truly and fully are little by little. And little by little, we come to accept the highly edited version of ourselves. You know what I'm talking about. That version we put forth before the world to see, hoping that the world will find it more acceptable than the real thing. The real thing being who we are. Yes, as a preacher and theologian, Beekner has provided insight into human nature regarding secrets. We all have secrets. Don't sit out there or you may be looking virtually and say, uh-uh, you have a secret. But today, as we celebrate the ritual, oh, let me say, yeah, I have secrets too. And I want you to think that I'm putting myself above you. As we celebrate the ritual of Palm Sunday, and people today, like people in Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, are laying down palms and shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. What palms are we laying down? What secrets do we have within ourselves about Jesus? What edited version of our beliefs are we putting forth to the world, hoping that the world will find it more acceptable than the real thing? The real thing that we have within ourselves. Maybe this is the trouble the reason for the trouble that we have in the world today remember the people with jesus were saying hosanna on palm sunday but many of those same people were saying crucify him crucify him that following friday because they didn't fully understand who Jesus truly was. So, do you understand who Jesus is in order to have a true witness of him, for him, that will no longer be a secret in you, but will be a witness a real witness for the world to see in you so you can have a strong response as to who is this king of Jesus who is this Jesus I'm trying to say who is this Jesus and because of your foundation you won't be ashamed to talk about him but more importantly, your life will demonstrate who he truly is. The text says there is a great crowd, a large crowd that went ahead before Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. But before this, the crowd had either heard about or witnessed Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. So they were spreading the news about the miracle or signs as the evangelist John calls it in the gospel according to John that the man Jesus 
had raised someone from the dead. But there were still some folks who didn't believe that Jesus was the Savior, the King of the Jews that they had been waiting for, hoping for, wanting, and needed to save them from the Roman government. Because Jesus came into this world without any fanfare. No trumpets. Not surrounded by the usual pomp and circumstance fit for a king. The text says that even Jesus' own disciples, who he lived with, didn't fully understand who this Jesus was, not until he was glorified. How was Jesus glorified? We know that God said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. We know that Jesus was glorified through the people's witness. Glorified that Jesus through the prophecy of the scripture that is finally being fulfilled. <laughs> then they remembered the things that had been written about Jesus and how Jesus himself spoke of his power given to him by God. The disciples had forgotten about this secret they had within about Jesus. They walked with him. They talked with him. They ate with him. They heard about and learned about God who created them from Jesus. But they still didn't fully understand or had forgotten. They had forgotten the prophecy in Zechariah, the Hebrew scripture, the Old Testament prophet in chapter 9, verses 9 through 10 that spoke of, Here comes your king triumphant and victorious, riding on a donkey. But some of the people remembered the prophecy that lingered in their minds. Do you remember the prophecy? Therefore they laid down palms for the king, the savior, to ride across. But like the disciples, we too tend to forget who is this Jesus. Because of human nature, like Beekner referenced, I'm sure some of the people laid out palms for Jesus who didn't fully understand who this man was or understood or accepted the love he had for them or understood what the upcoming sacrifice he was going to make on our behalf. They just wanted the world to see a certain image of them making a gesture about this man named Jesus. What about you? What about me? Today, in this 21st century, are we just laying out palms as a gesture about Jesus? It's not about the ritual of palms, but it is all about having a true relationship for Jesus or a true relationship with Jesus for just who he is. It just can't be about the miracles or, as John says, the signs he performs for us. It must be about a trust in Jesus. A trust and a belief that he is who he said 
He is. Let's not be a part of the crowd that forgets who Jesus truly is. Who is this Jesus? He is the one you can tell all of your secrets to. Who is this Jesus? He's the one who already knows all of our secrets. Who is this Jesus? The one that can keep all secrets that he knows about you from the world. He won't go out gossiping about you. He won't go out talking about you. He won't go out saying, girl, have you heard? Have you heard? So on this Palm Sunday, Jesus is challenging us today. As he challenged the people who followed him into Jerusalem looking for more miracles or signs to prove himself. Yes, we are able to believe there is Jesus because of miracles performed in our lives. But Jesus is challenging us to move beyond just the miracles into a deeper trust, a deeper faith, a deeper belief. So if he doesn't do anything else for us, he has already shown greater love. There are times that the signs of Jesus aren't as prevalent. But we still must glorify him with our witness. We must glorify him by believing. We must glorify Jesus by remembering past victories. We must, we must glorify Jesus because of past moments of peace we have had on a difficult journey. So we believe, so we must remember, but on top of that, we must testify, either with our mouths or with our actions. As I have focused on Beekner, I must share a secret today. I'm a little teary today, I guess you all noticed. This is the second year I have been baptized because of COVID. I was waving my palms, but my heart aches. Since I so love witnessing with the candidates as they come up out of the water, telling their world their profession of faith in Jesus. But as I look back on prior years when baptisms occurred, I have such great joy. You all probably don't remember when I would walk up with my waders on and I'm throwing him under the bus. Michael Corbett would laugh every time because I would go squish, 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 squish. Each year he would tell me about the squishing or my thighs rubbing together. <laughs> you didn't say that. I'm saying that was the squish, squish. But as I look back on prior years, I have such joy. That is based upon my belief in Jesus, my remembrance of just who he is, my ability and willingness to be able to testify about him. It is not because I'm a preacher ordained. It's because of my relationship with Jesus. What about you? As you wave or hold the palms, what is your deeper understanding and willingness to share your secret as to who is this Jesus. You see, who is this Jesus must be personal. It has to be personal. It can't be based upon your mama, your mothers or fathers. It can't be based upon just 
other people praying for you, it must be based upon your personal relationship with Jesus, the Son of God. Now let me tell you something. I can wave this not just on Palm Sunday, but on any other Sunday because of the relationship. It's about a relationship. It's not just about waving the palms. It's just a demonstrative action of what you believe within. I can tell you, who is this Jesus to me? I'll give it to you personally. Two years ago, April the 30th, my sister died when I was on my way to vacation. Things change, journey. I think about when I was sitting around the clock with my mother, but she died when I went home to take a shower. I think about how my father, I made it home just in time, and he died in my arms. I wave that because, I can wave the palms because of the peace that Jesus has given me. It hasn't been easy. But let me share some joys with you why I raise and wave the palms. Because when Jesus called me the first Baptist church, I can wave the palms. When I think about my 33 years, been with him 39 years and he didn't leave me, I can wave the palms. When I look at how God is bringing us through this COVID pandemic, I can raise my palms tomorrow the next day, and the next day, and the next day, it doesn't become a ritual. It's about the relationship that I have in here. What? Who is this Jesus to you? You got to dig deep. So while you're waving the palms, think about who is this Jesus to you. Be able to believe. Be able to believe, be able to remember, then be able to testify. You're not ashamed of it. Because when times are tough, and because of your relationship with this Jesus, he'll help you wave those palms in the heart. I'm a witness. Are you a witness? Are you a witness? Are you a witness? Will you be a witness? Will you be a witness? The song, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. He loved me, he loved you, with all of your faults, with all of my faults. That's a testimony right there as to who is this Jesus. Come on, singers. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me.
today because of who Jesus is. That's why I'm full today. And what he's going to do with any of us who are going through. I forgot to tell the story. This past Wednesday, when I was doing the last Lenten lunch, not Lenten lunch, it's Lenten virtual worship. In the midst of an overview or beginning the sermon before Nancy Ostrich was about to sing, I got into a coughing attack, a coughing fit. And I remember looking straight into the camera and saying, those who are watching, I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. I just need you to pray right now. I couldn't stop coughing. It wasn't an embarrassment. It wasn't a secret. Everybody, everybody was a witness. Nancy was a witness. First gentleman, John Ostrich, all were witnesses. And in my heart, I knew that all would be well because of my relationship. And if I would have still been coughing, it still would have been well because of who sometimes we don't understand all the stuff we're going through but we walk through with trust in Jesus that it's going to work out those who don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sins please accept him right now all you have to say is Jesus I believe Jesus I trust Jesus, I remember all the things you have done for me even when I wasn't in relationship with you. And Jesus, I will witness with my life, with my actions. Just hold on to me, Jesus. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes.